G'day, it's Greg Newson here and I thought I'd put this video together just to explain the importance of good health. Now many of us don't, we don't even give a second thought to our digestive process because it just happens automatically without us thinking about it. But we also don't understand, or most of us don't understand the importance or the key importance of, of good digestive health on our, on our whole body and our lo whole long term health. So signs and symptoms of a, a poor digestive system, they, they, are, they are varied, there's quite a few of them, but there can be things like constipation, diarrhea, bloating, gas, abdominal pain, uh, a different coloured stool other than brown, it should be nice medium brown colour. If it's a different colour, you know, orange or tan or yellow or green, that's obviously not a good digestive system. There can be um, irritable bowel syndrome, um, colic, uh, smelly stools, smelly gas. So it's quite a variety of things that, that can indicate uh, poor digestion. So when we look at the digestive process, I'm just going to give you an, an understanding, of, 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 of a basic understanding of, of what's happening when we digest food or processed food. So firstly, you put something into your mouth, you start, to, you start to chew it, and then that goes into the stomach, and then it goes from the stomach into the small intestines, and then from the small intestines, some nutrients are absorbed, and then out in, into the colon and out the back end. Right, so that's what we most, most probably all of us think about. So that's true, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. So when we chew our food, the saliva stimulates uh, or tells the stomach, hey, food's on the way, start making some more stomach acid. Now the role of stomach acid is really important. So the role of stomach acid is to start the process of breaking down food, as are the teeth and the saliva in, in, in the mouth. So think of it this way, you've got an old building that needs to be wrecked. And you've got one of those big cranes with one of those big wrecking balls. And that wrecking ball comes along to the wall of the building and it goes bang and it knocks it and it breaks it down to big chunks of brick. That's what the stomach acid does to the food, right? So very, very important. You don't want a big whole wall going from your stomach into your intestines. So then from there, we go from the stomach into the small intestine, where the pancreas, so that there's, then there's a message sent to the pancreas, hey, food's on the way, make some digestive enzymes. So digestive enzymes are made, and those digestive enzymes break the big chunks of brick down to like grains of sand. And those grains of sand are then absorbed through the villi that lie in the intestinal tract. And then, you know, they go in there and they go into the bloodstream. And then the, straight in the bloodstream, they go, so all the blood from the digestive system goes to the liver. And the liver goes, oh, okay, you're an essential amino acid. We need to use you there or we need to turn you into a non-essential amino acid or your vitamin B6, we need to turn you into pyridoxal 5-phosphate, the active form of, of B6, and it orchestrates where it needs to go. So it puts all of those vitamins and minerals and antioxidants and, phy anti and phytonutrients into the bloodstream. The waste that's left over from the small intestines then goes into the colon. Now you think that's all junk, but it contains a lot of fibres that aren't absorbed. Now those fibres uh, become food for the beneficial bacteria. Those beneficial bacteria then make more beneficial bacteria. But those beneficial bacteria also then make certain um, nutrients, whether it be vitamins, uh, certain vitamins uh, to, to keep us healthy. Um, so then the water is reabsorbed out of the stool and then it passes out the back end into the toilet. Okay. So you need to get a good digestive system because if you've got low stomach acid, so you've got reflux, heartburn, burping, this is a good indication of low stomach acid, I know. Most people are most probably on Nexium or Somax or Pariot or some protein pump inhibitor like that, but it's, they're only suppressing the symptom. The body's saying, hey, I haven't got enough stomach acid, so I'll let things ferment in the stomach. Like you go get a piece of uh, meat, throw it in a, a Ziploc bag, throw it in the sun for a, a 24 hours or throw it outside 24 hours, the bag expands. Same thing happens here, it expands, it's going to come up this way or it's going to spend all the way and go down, down the back end. Right? So really important to obviously notice the signs and symptoms but to, to understand that, that, that process. So it's really important to, to, to know how the digestive system works because when you eat the right foods, so that's a very important part of a good digestion, the right diet, we spoke about that last video, so the right diet starts to stimulate the right digestive uh, system and the right digestive processes. 
proper digestion decreases stress because if your body's not getting the right nutrients, it's freaking out. It's going, oh my God, I'm low in this and I'm low in that. And, and it starts to get agitated. Low in magnesium, you get cramps. So low in, in, in zinc and B6, you can have pyluria. Um, low in calcium, osteoporosis, the, 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 the list goes on. So it, it, it's really important. Um, GABA, that nutrient um, that B calm can help manufacture, it's really important for the whole proper um, absorption of food because GABA stimulates the digestive enzymes, but GABA is the, the tranquilizing neurotransmitter, which we mentioned previously. And in Europe, where they sit down and they have siestas, they're nice and calm. Generally, they're nice and calm. And they have the long lunches. And that helps the absorption of food, because when you're running around like that blue fly and you're rushing here and you're rushing there, you have an increase in adrenaline, which, and also an increase in a, in a brain chemical called glutamate. Now, when glutamate's elevated, GABA's suppressed and what when you rush around that adrenaline shunts all the blood away from the digestive system if you shunt the blood away from the digestive system because it needs to go to other parts of the body you're you're um, decreasing the ability to absorb nutrients you're decreasing the ability to slow the transit time down you, you slow the absorption of nutrients down so it's important to remain calm so poor digestion equals equals uh, an, an increase in stress and then that causes an increase in uh, malabsorption. So, if we look at the digestive system, most people think, yeah, okay, they'll absorb, you've told me I've absorbed all the food, I, I can understand that. But did you realise that 70% of your body's whole immune system lives in the gut? So if you've got uh, an unhealthy gut, how healthy is your immune system going to be? So signs, uh, diseases that can tell you that the, 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 the gut immune system's not right. Any autoimmune disease, type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's disease, um, recurring colds and flus, recurring infections, um, ear infections, all those type of things, cancer, high cholesterol, you know, because the beneficial bacteria, the immune system in the gut, they actually lower cholesterol levels. So that's another thing as well. So also, people that suffer depression, people that suffer mental illness, 90% of your body's serotonin is not in the brain. It is in the gut. It sits in the entochromaffin cells in the intestinal tract and they also line the respiratory tract, all the intestines. And they are secreted through the gut walls into the bloodstream. So if you've got a bad gut, how well are you going to produce and manufacture, well not manufacture, how well are you going to produce and manufacture because of the absorption, um, serotonin. Dopamine, high amounts of dopamine in, in the gut, that's concentration, learning, memory. High amount, GABA is, is essential for gut function, we've already spoken about that. Acetylcholine, which is deficient in people with dementia and Alzheimer's, that's the thing that stimulates peristalsis, that's the movement of the poo through the, through the digestive tract. So, really, really important. Um, the brain blood connection, the, the brain blood, the brain gut connection and the immune connection, if you draw a pyramid, um, they, they're really, really, really important for your long-term health. And if you think about it now, 70% of the immune system here, the microsecond something happens in the gut, there's a message sent to the brain. If the gut's inflamed, how well is that message going to get through? If the gut's dirty, how well is that message going to get through? If you want to know extreme examples of that, autism. Autism is really poor communication and the brain's on fire, right? Um, so I mentioned previously that um, the, the bacteria within the gut, they make certain nutrients. Um, so when they eat the fibres and they, their byproducts are certain vitamins. Guess what vitamins? Biotin, B6, really, really, really important for pyluria. Um, B2, B5, uh, vitamin K2, uh, inositol, also good for mental health, um, folic acid uh, and choline. So really important to get that gut health right because you're taking nutritional supplements where you might just be able to get a little bit more out of your out of your beneficial bacteria in the gut. So the probiotics will help with that. So things like multibac 10. So um, poor digestion also leads to um, leaky gut syndrome. So leaky gut syndrome, microscopic holes that appear in the gut wall that can allow undigested food, bacteria, bacteria byproducts, poisons, in severe cases, feces to pass into the bloodstream. Anything in the bloodstream has to be filtered by the liver. So the liver goes, oh my goodness me, there's a whole heap of stuff I don't want here. Guess where it puts it back into? The intestines. Puts a little bit into the kidneys, but puts the bulk of it back into the intestines. So it just goes round and around and around. We know that leaky gut and that, that inflammation, that toxicity, um, the, the oxidative stress, all drives up HPL, right? So you just, if you have got leaky gut, you're forever going to be pushing up 
your HPL levels, which is going to be forever worsening pyluria. So it's really, this is why it's really important to get the diet right, to get the digestive right, to get the, the leaky gut syndrome right. In severe cases, if the, if, the, if the barrier of the gut is permeated, the brain barrier, there's a, there's a membrane that surrounds your brain called the blood-brain barrier, that is also permeated. So they're now finding, and there's that gut-brain connection as well, they're now finding that leaky gut also is leaky brain. So it's obviously very important to fix up leaky gut. So um, the digestive system, you know, the, it's also where you get rid of the bulk of the waste out of the body. So, you know, if you're constipated, if you're not going to the toilet properly, or you've got this leaky gut syndrome going around and around, where's all the toxins going? They're staying within you. The body doesn't need toxins. It's like your um, a fuel filter in the car or your vacuum filter, the filter in the vacuum cleaner. Once they get clogged up, the car doesn't work and the vacuum don't suck. So the human body needs to get rid of waste. Piddle and poo, skin and lungs, they're the, 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 the four, oh, plus hair and nails, but they're the four main excretory organs within the body, right? So gut, really, really important. So hopefully that's given you some useful information about the importance of digestion and the importance of digestion, treating digestion or improving digestion for pyluria. So if you'd like any help um, managing digestive health or pyluria, um, where by all means we can help, we can organise a Skype consultation or our website and the contact us page and fill in the form and we will get back to you within 24 hours. So hopefully that has given you some good information. Until next time, this is Greg and have a wonderful day. Thank you.